We've helped a ton of baristas this year start their home espresso journey. And we want to remind all of you that we get it. Figuring out where to begin can feel a little daunting. We've all been there. We speak to hundreds of aspiring home baristas each week. We hear about their struggles, the wasted coffee, the mess, the hours spent in pursuit of the perfect espresso. And we thought, hey, maybe we could make every new barista's life a little easier. I'm Sam, an educator at Clive Coffee, and I'm here in our Portland showroom to share seven things every new barista should know. Ready? We understand you're new to the home barista game. You don't want to spend $20 on a bag of coffee when you're learning how to get things right. It feels like money down the drain. I'll let you in on a little secret. You're making things harder for yourself by not using great coffee. The work it takes to dial in cheap, old coffee is much more difficult than dialing in high quality, well-roasted, fresh coffee. If you wanna start things off right, you should buy coffee that is five to 10 days off roast. Fresh coffee contains more solubles and CO2 generated in the roasting process. In a shot of espresso, that gas or CO2 is your crema. Fresh coffee will have lots of body and crema where older coffee may be bland and thin. The older the coffee, the more time it's had to off gas, the less stuff remains in the coffee, the less there is to extract and pull from the grounds. This results in quicker brew times and shots with little to no crema. To offset this, you'd need to grind finer and finer to slow down your shot, but this puts you at risk of jamming your grinder and likely you'll be left dealing with soggy espresso pucks. If you've pulled shots like these, maybe they've sprayed everywhere or looked watery, check your roast state. If you successfully pull a shot with older coffee without choking your grinder, you'll still have to start the dialing process from scratch when you're finally ready to switch over to better beans. Save yourself the frustration and hassle. You'll have a much better time if you buy high quality beans from the beginning. There are five main enemies of coffee, moisture, temperature, light, time, and oxygen. Coffee is an organic product. It's the seed of a fruit, and if neglected, will become stale. That's why it's so crucial to keep your coffee away from fluctuating or extreme temperatures, moisture and humidity, bright lights, and most importantly, oxygen. Coffee exposed to oxygen expedites the aging process. To get the most out of your coffee, keep it in an airtight or vacuum sealed container or be diligent about pushing all of the air out of the bag through the one-way air valve. You can add a couple weeks of life to your coffee by storing it well. Similar to buying fresh coffee, having a great home grinder is the difference between a tasty shot and a terrible one. Since coffee changes day to day, the grind size will need to change daily. Having a grinder at home will not only allow you to keep your coffee in its freshest state, but will also allow you to control how your shots pull. This is everything. You're not doing things right if you're not tweaking your grinder daily. If you haven't yet purchased a home grinder, you wanna get something intended to grind for espresso. There are grinders on the market that can't grind fine enough or their stepped adjustments are too large and they won't allow you to fine tune your grind to dial things in just right. If you need recommendations, we're here to help. If you haven't been using a scale, you haven't experienced your best espresso. Two things go wrong when you don't use a scale. You can have a different amount of coffee going into your machine every time, causing variance in extraction and shot times. And also your shot yield could be inconsistent. Back to that whole fresh coffee concept. Crema weighs less than espresso. A one to two ounce shot with fresh coffee will weigh less than a shot at the same volume made with older coffee. Using a scale to measure your dose and yield in grams will give you consistency over time. And this brings us to another critical step in coffee making, following a recipe. Following an espresso recipe will allow you to replicate that perfect shot you pull. 
It's something to aim for. One of the most common espresso recipes uses one part ground coffee to two parts espresso, ideally pulled between 25 and 30 seconds. So you'll use that freshly roasted coffee, scale, and the grinder to dial things in until it tastes great, moving your grind size finer or coarser until your final shot falls in the recommended time frames. We have another video on how to pull the perfect shot that we'll link below. And once you get all the tools you'll need, you'll be ready to follow along. It's easy to get lost in the hobby, spend a lot of money on accessories and tools, and spend too much time with puck prep. We'll let you in on a little secret. It's best to keep things simple. When it comes time to prep your coffee beans before pulling a shot, less is best. I like to move the portafilter around while the grinder dispenses coffee to aid in distribution. Whether you have a tool or you manually distribute, try to do the same thing every time. I tap the side of the portafilter just a few times until the coffee lies flat in the basket. And when it comes time to tamp, lightly lean into the tamper, applying slow and gentle pressure to both sides of the base until you feel resistance and the coffee stops moving in the basket. The amount of pressure is not essential. Keep it level and make it easily repeatable. One of the hardest things to achieve when starting is consistency. Purging your grinder is one of the most overlooked practices that can make a world of difference. Many grinders have up to a couple of grams of ground coffee that remain in the burr chamber. This is known as grind retention, and it means that an adjustment in grind size doesn't have an immediate effect. Some particles from the previous setting will make their way into your next dose. So to make things easier for you, purge your grinder before pulling your first shot of the day, after making a grind adjustment, and when switching to a new bag of coffee, even if it's the same blend and roast state. Whether you're new to coffee or have been struggling with consistency in your shots, we hope these tips will simplify your routine and get you better tasting coffee at home. Want more tips? We've got all sorts of resources, blogs, videos below. Feel free to drop any questions in the comments and thanks for watching.